What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Skate has finally released in early access. Let's go ahead and optimize it for the best possible performance, taking a game from 100 FPS all the way up to almost 200, making it look even better in the process. So without further ado, let's begin. This video is obviously not going to be covering Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find guides to get even more out of your PC. Simply fire up your game at either from the main menu or when you're actually exploring around the world, pause and hit the X button to pull up your settings menu. Then open up settings and on the graphics tab, we can get some serious performance from our system. So under display, make sure VSync is turned off. Windowed mode, bottle is full screen or full screen is fine. Then under resolution scaling, make sure dynamic resolution is turned off. While this may technically help get you higher FPS, it's better to have a more consistent FPS number while you're traveling around. It should make everything feel a whole lot better. Upscaling, make sure that this is set to FSR with FSR set to quality. The only options we have are none and XESS, which is a little bit surprising. I don't see NVIDIA DLSS here, but maybe that'll be coming at some stage in the future. If you see DLSS and you have an NVIDIA a graphics card, I'd definitely recommend choosing that, but for now, FSR is all we have. None gives us basic options like FXAA and temporal anti-aliasing, but preferably using FSR for upscaling and anti-aliasing all in one should give you a better overall visual experience with a pretty big boost to performance. And having FSR set to quality does give you the biggest boost in performance without losing too much visual quality. Moving down to graphics, there's a couple of different presets here. Low is a very odd one as it hard caps your FPS to 30. Setting it to medium gives it a pretty big boost, in my case, all the way up to 200 FPS, but it doesn't look anywhere near as good as what I showed you at the start of this video. High takes a huge hit down to around 116 FPS, Ultra all the way down to around about the same place. For the most part, the difference between these besides FPS and looks is the amount of VRAM used. This game for me uses on lowest around 4.6 gigs of VRAM, moving all the way up to just over 6 gigs here. Obviously, you don't have too much choice about how much VRAM the game takes. Whatever you have is whatever you can offer the game with your current graphics card. That being said, as long as you meet the minimum requirements, you should be able to enjoy the game at most of the settings. While most of the options below affect the amount of VRAM your game uses, texture quality and filtering have a relatively small impact, lighting quality has a much larger impact, shadow quality a very small one, mesh quality a pretty substantial chunk, post-processing a surprisingly big chunk as well, Ambient occlusion has almost no change. Motion blur has a very small impact on VRAM of about 30 or so megs, but depth of field is surprisingly big. From 5. Point, almost 5 gigs of VRAM, setting this to low takes us all the way down to 4.6, which is insane. If you're struggling with VRAM, definitely set your depth of field all the way down to off and maybe motion blur as well. That's the most surprising option here. But besides that, if you're looking for a good looking game with some really good performance, I'd basically recommend cranking everything all the way up, except for depth of field if you're looking for more VRAM, which surprisingly uses almost a gig here, and even more surprisingly, global illumination. Changing this from dynamic to static pretty much doubles your FPS in one simple change. With these two very simple options, you've already pretty much reached the ceiling of performance for this game. Everything else here below global illumination has basically no effect on performance, both in static and dynamic global illumination mode. So that means static HGI quality, lighting quality, shadow quality, mesh quality, visual effects quality, post-processing, AO quality, and motion blur quality have basically no effect on performance, or at least it's very negligible. GI is the only real substantial option here with texture quality and depth of field quality having a pretty big hit on your VRAM usage. So with these two very, very simple changes, as well as making sure you have upscaling turned on, you can pretty much double your FPS instantly and enjoy a much smoother game that looks really close to the highest quality settings, just with about double the FPS. So yeah, that's really that. Hopefully you found this surprisingly quick video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.